We want to welcome you to Church of the Harvest, Christian Ministry, the blessing of you that are here in the sanctuary. We also want to welcome our Spring and Live audience. Thank you for joining us on this beautiful Sunday morning. You know, and uh, I want to say that, you know, I thank the ones that have been reaching out, the ones that have heard about the, the passing of my mother. She's going home to be with the Lord. But, you know, I have a sense of peace about it because um, God gave me this list to talk on grace. You know, we, can, we can't do anything without the grace of God. Mm -hmm. we got to have that peace of God, that peace that surpasses all understanding. Mm -hmm. You know, when you have that peace, you're able to move and do what God has commanded you to do. You're able to, 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 to be free and, and do the things that God has called us, called us to do. You know, and I'm going to start off in Ephesians 2 and 8. You know, and it, it talks about, you know, that when you get born again, you know, there ain't no job you want to do. You have to just accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. Amen. It, it says, by grace are you saved through faith. And it's not of yourself. It is the great gift of God. Not of works, lest any man should boast. For we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus unto good works, which God has before ordained that we should walk in them. You have to walk in this thing. You have to walk in this peace. You have to, you know, God, he said, he give you that peace, like I said, that surpasses all understanding. You know, um, sometimes people are looking at you and want to know well, why they're not falling apart, why they're not doing this. It's because of the grace and the peace of God. Amen. You know, we all go through some battles. Now, right? You know, I'm not going to say that I didn't go through no battles or I didn't go through no situation, you know. I had a crew all night, you know, but I was able to rest this morning. Mm -hmm. I was able to be at peace, you know. And, you know, whether or not, y'all know it, um, my wife means so much, you know, to me and to our family. It just, you don't know the hat that, um, that she wears. You know how, it, you know, she would get up in the morning time and go and would make sure mom had everything she needed, make sure she was peace and at rest that day. And so, you know, you got somebody that, that's by your side that's able to take a, lot, a load off you. You know, a person that's able to pray for peace over you. Not only, you know, do things physical, but do things in the spiritual arena. Amen. You know, it is more done in the spiritual arena than done in the natural. Amen. You know, we out here, we down here struggling and trying to work and do this and do this. And if we just take time and pray, Hallelujah. you know, that's all, what we have to do is just learn how to take time and pray. It's in God's grace. God is willing to forgive us and bless us abundantly in spite of the fact that we don't deserve it. You know, each and every one of us has done something, and some of us still doing some things that, you know, if it wasn't for God's grace. Amen. You know, sometimes we, we see people, and, you know, you want to just give them a piece of your mind, but sometimes what we have to start back doing is, is start praying for people. Amen. You know, a lot of people don't understand that what they're doing, you know, or, or the things that they say is coming against the Word of God. Mm -hmm. You know, you got to speak God's Word in all situations, in un all circumstances. You know, a lot of times, you know, you don't understand why, but, you know, by and by, when we get to heaven, you know, you would know, you know, a lot of people just want to get their rope, but a lot of times we need to strive to get our crown, too. Amen. You know, get it all, yeah. you know, be able to, to sit back and relax and enjoy. Amen. Amen. 2 Corinthians 9, 8, and it says, God is able to make all grace abound towards you, that you always have an all sufficiency in all things, may abound to every good work. You know, a lot of times we read the scripture when we're talking about offering, but, you know, you, you need grace in every area of your life. Amen. You know, you need that grace. You need that abundance supply that God has for us. You know, God God has so much for us. This thing, it, it's a lot of us, we're only just walking in a, a tenth of what God has in store for us. You know, the peace. That God has for you know, you just imagine you can have peace in every situation in life, whatever you're dealing with. You know, God is able to give you peace, He's able to give you strength, amen. He's able amen. to allow you to do different things, amen. amen. They say, in all things, you may abound to every good work, every good work. You know, what is God telling you to do? You know, a, a lot of times people don't realize what we lose a loved one. You know, it, it's a loss, but God re replaces that. You know, God give you other spiritual parents that's able to speak life to you, you know, able to, to do some things and everything. You know, 
Yeah, you know, I, I thank God, and don't get me wrong, I thank God for, for my mom, because she was the first woman that I ever loved. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Amen. Yeah. The first woman that I ever loved. Mm -hmm. yeah. and, and, you know, and, and growing up, she made me always feel special. You know, like my wife would say, you know, growing up, when I get up in the morning to go to work, you know, I ain't had to worry with stopping to the store and getting on lunch. <laughs> She sent me breakfast and lunch, amen. My wife, you got the lunch, but she'll send two bags. Yeah, had have one with the breakfast in it, and then um, he had the other one with the lunch in it. Uh, you know, I would have everything. She had it made for the first 10 years, amen. I mean, had it made. She would, mom would do everything. She would make sure that her son was going to be able to eat, amen. It's in the word of God is clear that I was set in life and health depend on the development of our soul. And, and your soul development, it, it, de it depends on how much word you put on the inside of you. Amen. Amen. You know, every battle that we go through, it, you know, it's, it's a test of your faith. It's a test of the word that you have allowed to penetrate into your heart. Mm -hmm. You know, a, a lot of times you can uh, walk around and you see grass growing up out of cement, the little crack in cement. Mm -hmm. You see grass trying to come up out of it, but see, it's not going to get the abundant supply because of the cement. So... But if you take the cement away and you allow the word to penetrate in your heart, you're able to, to get everything you need from God. Everything Amen. that God has for you, Amen. you're able to get it all. Amen. Amen. And so that's what I want to encourage. Let's, let's get everything mm -hmm. that God has for us. You know, we need to, to, to get back and relax and we're coming out of a pandemic, but don't we come out of two phase. Mm -hmm. Don't y'all drop your guards mm -hmm. two phase. Mm -hmm. You know, Amen. you still got to be careful, you know. Mm -hmm. We still got to be mindful. We still got to be watchful. Amen. Mm -hmm. and, and we still, number one, you got to pray. Mm -hmm. You know, you, you got to pray and you got to thank God for grace. Amen. Third John 3 and 2 says, Beloved, I wish above all things that thou mayest prosper and be in hell, even as thy soul prospers. God has given us more grace than we can ever deserve. Amen. Amen. You know, I, I was thinking about this situation then. In the Bible, where it talks about this man had a debt forgiven, and then he went around and, and wanted to crucify the people that still owe him. Mm -hmm. You know, we have to learn how to walk in love. The, the same grace and favor yeah. that God bestow upon you, we need to be willing to bestow it upon somebody else. Mm -hmm. And see, as we go around and you know, just think about the world that we'll be living in. Right. You know, it, it's getting so, and we, we as believers, we've got to start that praying. You know, it, it's so many times, you can't go to the grocery store. You can't, I mean, we got to pray. I mean, when we pray, we got to bind up the devil. Mm -hmm. You know, you got to get him off your shoulder. You got to stop him from talking in your ears. Get him back under your feet where he belongs. Mm -hmm. You know, the scripture talks about, I said, the devil goes about as, it said, as a roaring lion. Mm -hmm. That means it's just an imitation. He's not for real. Mm -hmm. You know, and so we, we got to start back speaking forth the word. We got to you know, they say train up your child. So train that child how to speak forth the word. Mm -hmm. You know, and, and don't, you know, be ashamed. If, if somebody come up to you and, and God is doing great things in your life and they ask you a question, tell them, say, but mind God. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mind God says he shall supply all of them I need mm -hmm. according to his riches and glory. And it says by Christ Jesus. Mm -hmm. You know, so that let you know that you're not going to attain it without Christ. Be in the center of the focal point, the head of your life. Amen. Mm -hmm. Amen. And James 4 6 it said, But God has given us more grace. Well, well, for he said, God resists the proud, but give it grace unto the humble. Mm -hmm. Don't be so proud. Amen. You know, if God, if, you know, a lot of times we get into a situation where we may, don't look at somebody giving you a hand out, somebody's blessing you. God had raised up people to be a blessing yeah, to us. Amen. You know, and, and like I always, always tell you, we as believers, we a lot of times when you're in anticipation and expectation from something from God, you ought to be having a crook neck. When somebody calls your name, you know, God has placed you upon on their heart. Amen. You know, there's a lot of people that are supposed to be blessing you right now. And guess what? They're holding up your blessing in that area because they they don't want to, you know, some people feel like, well, they don't need it. Mm -hmm. You know, it, it's not all about whether the person you're giving it to need it, but it is whether you need it or not. Amen. You know, you don't want to need to plant the seeds. See, if you plant the seeds, you notice how when farmers plant farm, you know, each year it seems like they increase their the seed planting. Mm -hmm. 
And, and that's what we as believers need to do. We need to increase our seed planting each and every year. And, and the more you give, the more you open up room for God to bless you. Amen. You don't go around and build a bigger storehouse, amen. Mm -hmm. You look for ways to be a blessing to somebody else. Yeah. You look for a way to be able to, to, to talk to somebody else, you know, because um, you, you never know when you may be, you, well, we all in need of grace. Amen. Don't matter where you're at. Amen. Amen. You need grace amen. 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 And, and everything. So, you know, we don't want to look at it that way. And, and don't learn how to, you know, let pride go. Amen. Let pride go. <laughs> Sometimes God will send somebody across your path, and, and you know you know what you're dealing with, and they come to you with the same situation you're dealing with. But your pride will tell you, no, it's not me. No, you, let pride go and let, let God go. You don't know who God is going to use to bless you. <laughs> you know you don't know. We try to size a person up when they walk in the door, but you don't know. Amen. You know you may tell somebody no, and God not ask them. Tell them to come and pay off all of you here. Mm -hmm. But you looking at them, you know, they come in with tennis shoes, well, people with holes in the jeans. Now, that is that natural. <laughs> you know, I can't see, you know, going in stores, you know, that money and, and the holes in there. When I was little, you know, I was little, man, one thing, my mama, she used to always patch up my clothes. You know, she used to get these patches with the iron on the jeans. And, and, and now they, they go to the store and buy them with holes in the jeans. You know, I don't, you know. That, that, that's something I got to realize. I, I got to go to that part. We used to cover up our holes when I was little, but now they, you know, they, they, they go to the store and, and you know, we get jeans for about $40. They go pay $140 for a pair of holes. So, so I, you know, that I have to grow up. And I, you know, they, they have to grow up. You know, that, that's some things, you know, we have to grow up. Amen. Uh, John 1 16, and it's in the fullness. Have all we receive and grace for grace. You know, God is giving you grace. The, the, the more we grow, the more grace He's going to give us. Mm -hmm. Because, see, what we have to do is we have to learn how to share our grace. Mm -hmm. We have to, when people come to you and ask you questions, you know, you got to be a willing participator. Mm -hmm. What I mean by a willing participator, tell them what you did. Yeah. Tell them how you're moving from grace to grace, from glory to glory, mm -hmm. that you've given God no time. You know, if you. You know, all, we, all you wanted to do is just get, you know, a college degree, but there's still more degree, you know, and, and stuff. So it, 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 it's, it's, the Bible even talks about it, says, God said his people are destroyed for a lack of knowledge. Mm -hmm. But it's not book knowledge. You know, we go and we want all the world of knowledge, all the educational knowledge we can get, but we got to increase in the word of God, too. Yes, you know, it, it's not, you have to get to the pinnacle until you're seated at the right hand of the Father, you're up there with Jesus, you know, that's when you're at the penalty, you're able to rest, mm -hmm. you know, but as long as we're down here, there, there's always somebody need what God is placing on the inside of you, mm -hmm. you always want to share, you know, people want to know, sometimes, you know, people come into your presence, they, they, they just want to know because it's such a peace Amen. about you, Amen. you know, you don't go someplace and, and it seems like every place this person goes, is never turmoil mm -hmm. all around. And you come in and, and like peace just comes to the situation. Amen. You know, everything. People are there just as cussing and everything is. You know, y'all do know what cussing is, because all yes. y'all know. Amen. You know, you know about cussing, you know. Amen. All y'all done, done that shit for every once in a while. Even though you say, you know, the devil got one little word, somebody's going to come and go push a button, and before you know it, they just say, Father, forgive me. That's pretty true. Right he already forgive me, because he know that day and time, he know that person was coming into your your um, area, was coming around you, and was going to push the wrong button. Amen. Some of us, you know, you're glad you're working for home now. But then you have to deal with the, the person in the next cubicle, you know, pushing your button or going in the refrigerator eating up your lunch. You know, you, know, you got to have grace, you know, and, and everything. You know, I didn't keep up. You know, that, that one thing I guess I was blessed. I never... I always ain't had to worry with nobody bothering my lunch and that's where I work at. Amen. I ain't never had to worry with that because nobody be around if if Mr. Snake come up there he can have it. <laughs> I don't have to deal with people. You know, it, it just you know, we can we can be, you know, that's why we gotta have grace. You know, that's why we gotta have grace. Amen. In John 1 16 and 5 say for out of his fullness 
abundance. We have all received and all had to share, and we were all supplied with one grace after another, and spiritual blessing upon spiritual blessing, even favor upon favor, and gift upon gift. You, you see how God operates? Mm -hmm. You know, he, he just continued to just bless us. And, and that's how, how it should be. You know, what it is, it's like a training method, how we are to continue to bless our children, continue to bless our, our leaders and, and loved ones. We have to continue to be a blessing one to another. Right. Right. You know, the, the enemy always, he, the, the devil's job is to try to slow you down. Amen. You know, if he can't slow you down, he'll try to speed you up. You know, I've seen a lot of people that started off and, and they were running well, they were doing great in the things of God, and the next thing you know, they start listening to the enemy. Mm -hmm. The enemy tell them, man, you overloaded than that person. But, you know, it, it, it's true, you may be more anointed than that person, you may be a, a more elegant speaker than that person, but it, it may not be your time and season yet. Mm -hmm. You know, a, a lot of times you go out before your time and season, you get burned out. Mm -hmm. And the next thing you know, you're back in the streets, in the bars, and everything else, and then you'll be wondering what happened. Mm -hmm. and, and so that's why it always, it just, just slow your pace down, take your time. You know, a, a lot of people don't, I think it was, I got saved in 1980, I, I never remember. It, right there, the building's still standing right there on uh, Antioch. That, that was the name of the building where I got saved there. Sure. You know? Jervé. Uh -huh. Jeremy, but uh, I'm saying the building that was called the Antioch. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Jeremy Street, where I, where I got saved. And I, I seen, we went through that thing, and everything building up around it, but the building is still there. Mm -hmm. that, that building is still there. And, you know, I got saved in uh, 1988, but it was three years later before I really made a continuous effort to serve God. Mm -hmm. You know, because, you know, like you, you know how it is. All y'all been through it. You got one foot in the church, and one foot, you know, on the weekends, you still want to try to hang with your, your buddies. But, you know, sooner or later when things start happening, you know, you start feeling an unease in your spirit, you know, when, you, when you're hanging around them. And then when you get around the folks in the church, you know, you always felt good. When you go home, you're excited. You go home, you, you know, you're at peace. And I know if we went to um, been the elderly one night, and uh, we were leaving church and the, the police stopped me and I was bold that night. He said, you high? I said, yes, sir, but you can't get no ticket. <laughs> you know, I just left church. And he said, what you mean? I said, high, I got it against the law. And then he started laughing, so evidently he was born again. And because, you know, in, in these little towns, you got you might go from here about six foot and the speed level will change it go from 35 to 25 and it ain't no way if you drive 35 you will drop back that fast and so, but he tell me say have a nice day I say thank you sir that was grace that was peace you know and, 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 and so I, I just thank God you know we have to remember we are his workmanship God created you amen, amen. God created you you know everything about you God knows mm -hmm. every situation we go through God knows. You know, I, I, my favorite scripture in Psalm 139, 14, he said, before he formed you in your mother's womb, he knew you. He knew that everything that was going to happen, like he knew from the time my mom was born to the time she paid. He knew everything that, that she was going to go through. And he made her, she was a strong woman. She, she wasn't feisty or mean, but she was a strong person. She went through some battles over the year. I'll never forget them. I think it was about 10 or 15 years ago, she, she'd been in the hospital and the doctors and stuff were about to they give her up. And, and my wife, again, she prayed for her. We prayed that day and what is about 15 years later, you know. So when you talk about how when the, the prophet went to the, um, Hezekiah and told him to get his house in order, and God gave him 15 more years. Amen. See, so when you're going through something, you, you got to go to God. Remind God. You know, and, and if you if you can't go to him personally, have somebody in your life that's able to get a prayer to you. Amen. Amen. You know, you don't want nobody in your life always their the prayers don't never reach the ceiling right there. <laughs> you know, they're, they're the type of folks you need to get away from. If they come to you and say, God, if it's your will, 
You need to stop and rest there. Because they need to know. If they're praying over you, they need to know the will of God. You know, they're asking God if it's his will. You know, that means they ain't no confidence. And you're in trouble. Amen. So you want to surround yourself. You know, I was getting, um, you know, I, I thank God for, for my, my um, friend in, in Fort Lauderdale, a prophet. I was I turned the um, thing on and, and he was acknowledging me and my family. You know, this morning, and I, I thank God for that. You know, and he, the other words, when the prophet is, is praying over here, it's already done. You, you're going to walk in peace. Amen. You're going to have peace. He's, you know, and, and you're going to have that, that peace that surpasses all understanding. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. And, and see, we, we need to know how to accept the call of God. What is God telling you to do? You know, God is not calling everybody to be pastors that stand up behind for you. Man, Amen. Mm -hmm. he, he's not, you know, a lot of us just think more of us can be more effective than when you go around that you're yeah. telling somebody about how God is Amen. telling you. Mm -hmm. You know, just wanting to have a church, a, a building with people in there, mm -hmm. and then some of the people in there start throwing dots at you. <laughs> Check your head, you know what I'm talking about. <laughs> Hallelujah. See, it's better. It, you know, where you know you can do more ministering, you know, just out in the in the atmosphere. You you come in contact with more people. Mm -hmm. A lot of people that you come to come in contact with, they need to know about God's grace. They need to know about the favor of God. Mm -hmm. They need to know about God healing. You know, and and most of all, they need to know about how to be prosperous mm -hmm. in their life. You know, when you tell a person how that they can be prosperous, you know, a lot of people are. Um, want to know, well, how can I give 10% of my income away and, and, and still live an abundant life? It's it called doing what God has called you to do. Amen. You know, a lot of times, because a lot of us, we're struggling when we keep the 100%. I mean, and then when you start giving away 10%, some can give 20, some giving 30, and, and everything. And the, the more you give away, guess what? The more God gives you back. Amen. Amen. The more he gives you back, I, I heard testimonies just like uh, with the um, the offering the other, the other week. You know, people was they was getting double back what what they was getting. Mm -hmm. that, that, that God. Mm -hmm. and that, that's God. And see what God does, He uses He used that to make a believer out of the people that are around you. Mm -hmm. Amen. You know, I, I never forget sometime when I first learned how to, to tap into giving. You know, it, it was amazing. A lot of people want to know, look at you got slick tires on your car. You giving money away to the church? <laughs> but now I don't have that problem. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. You know, I, I, I look at all the different vehicles that I got on the road that got tires on. And, you know, one time I used to be ashamed to look at the tires on them because they were so slick. Now I walk around and I say, Father, I thank you. Amen. You know, the tires not wearing out very mature. You know, and everything, how God is blessing you. And, and see, so we got to learn how to, to, to walk in this favor. we got to run with this favor. And they can say, you, you need to accept the call of God. Ephesians 4 1 said, I therefore, the prisoner of the Lord, they seek you that you walk worthy of the vocation for which you are called. If you're not called to be a pastor in a local church, we're all called to preach. You know, all of us. Every time you, someone gets born again, they're called. To go out and tell somebody it's about Christ. Amen. You know, but they don't, just don't think that, you know, and a, a lot of times what messes people up is that when you get saved, you want to go hang around your buddies. You know, you want to show them how spiritual and then they say, oh man, you need to get a church. I'll be right there with you. And they're the first one that you'll never see. <laughs> <laughs> you know, they're the first one you'll never see, you know, because I, I, I learned things like that. I've seen things like that. But then again, you know, when I first got saved, I used to try to. Still hang with my buddies, you know. I I go around and then it, it was this preacher come to me and man, you you got to do something for God. You hanging around all these these sinners here, and I started telling you out here too, <laughs> you know. But one thing I learned, see, one thing you have to realize, you have to, to, to when when you are in a place like when I first got born again, the church really taught us on on righteousness, you know. It, it taught you on how to be in right standing. With God, and if you learn how to that once you're saved, you're in right standing with God, then you you're able to walk with you. You know, I mean, you can just get your shoulders up, your head up high, and walk and do what God has called you to do. Because a, a lot of times you, you you don't separate yourself totally. 
you know, you, you get strong. Like I tell you, you can't be a recovering alcohol. And as soon as you get saved, you go get your store, a job in a liquor store. You know, it ain't going to work. It, it just ain't going to work. Because see them, them names up on that shelf where you used to get on Friday afternoon? They're going to start calling you Monday, Tuesday. You know, they, 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 they know, when you're whispering out the door, when you're walking out the door, you, you're so strong, you're going to pray up that morning. You say, God, I, I ain't going to listen to Jill being the day. And, and then Crown Lord start calling you that. And you see a Crown Lord going to call your name in. And so, when, uh, so many other ones going to call your name in. If they don't, what it is? Jack Dan. That used to be my favorite, you know. I don't know how I forget about Jack. But see, all of them call your name. And, and here you go, you trying to serve God, and you got all this temptation. It, it just ain't going to work. And, and see, that's how we got to learn how to walk in, in, in wisdom. See, the devil tell you, well, I, I got you a job. No, God ain't hit you. You, get that job. <laughs> you, you can't handle that. You know, I, you know, you got a lot of people that that been saved for years. They ain't touched a, a drink in 20 and 30 years. And they go back and get a job in that place and get us what happened. You know, before long, you, you see them, they, they're telling Oh, he done stress me out. Somebody coming in and got on your last nerve. And, and so when they get on your last nerve, Oh, Jack Daddy said, you might have uh, one little, just, just one little taste, one little sip, they go hurt. And then you get the one, then the next day, they come back again, you get another. Oh, before you know it, you're giving that person a drink. So, so it, it just don't work. That's what I'm talking about, you're walking in wisdom, walking in favor and grace. You know, God has something better for you, amen? God has sent somebody there to, to, to take care of you. And then it, it said we have to learn how to you get some skills. Amen. You know, don't just try to learn and, and, and be the teacher after two weeks. You have to sit down and, and you have to let somebody teach you. You know, it, it, this ain't no quick, quick uh, fight here. This, this is a, a lifelong thing. You know, if you're going to walk in the peace of God and the grace of God, you got to do it every day. And, and one thing, you know, I want to encourage you, a lot of times people think they got to know every scripture from Genesis to Revelation to be able to, to tell somebody about Jesus. No, you, you just have to know the right one, Romans 10, 9, and 10. You know, you know those scriptures, and you're able to walk in those things, you're able to walk in the peace of God, then you're able to do what God has called you to do. Don't run around, get some skills, get some knowledge, and come someplace that they're teaching you how to live by faith. You know, we've got to learn how to, this is the faith walk we have. Yeah, and when we're walking this out by faith, you're able to do something like that. And we get some skills in Psalm 78, 72. And so he fed them according to the integrity of his heart. That, that's the key right there. You've got to have integrity in your heart. You know, you can't go around, you know, you know, want to bring, want to see the next man fall because they, they don't seem like they're moving further than you and quicker than you. You know, and, and so that, that's not how it works. It, you know, have some integrity in your heart. And he said, guide them by the skill of it of his hand. Watch your leader. You know, we, we have an awesome pastor here. Amen. You know, Amen. It, it's her lifestyle. Amen. Amen. You know, I've seen some buttons push on her, and, you know, I do want to knock the person out and see just walk in peace. You know, I, I'm going to tell you, I ain't always been saved, and I ain't always been a fighter, but, you know, it, it's just like I ain't going to let nobody say something wrong to her or push her the wrong Amen. way. Amen. You know, it, it, the pastor part and then the wife part. You know, because I, I think my brother said something to her the other week, and, and that might not tell him. I said, um, we got to hold your peace, buddy. Mm -hmm. I said, you're going, you're going down the wrong road here. You don't, don't push that person. Mm -hmm. I said, don't push. I said, that's my pastor and my wife. Mm -hmm. I said, so you, you didn't deal with a double-edged sword right there. Mm -hmm. So you, you better be careful mm -hmm. about what you say and how you say it mm -hmm. and when you say it. Amen. Mm -hmm. Amen. And then we, we need to learn how to accomplish some things. Mm -hmm. A lot of us got stuff on the table right now that we stopped on. Mm -hmm. You know, we, we just stopped doing it because we feel like it's too hard or, or we're not accomplishing it. We ain't getting there yet. You know, some of the things we want to get there quick. Yeah, but sometimes, you know, I, I learn like I, 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 I like cornbread. And you can't
can't cook a cornbread in a microwave, I don't think. <laughs> I mean, I don't know too much about cooking, but I, I really like cornbread. You know, when the cornbread come up out of the um, out of that pan and, and the crust, you know, you can have the center for it. You know, if you got that pan with the full corner, you may have one of the corners. I'm, I'm good for it. Yeah, I'm one of the corners, but you, you get them. You get the center of it or stuff, but that's what I like. That's some of the things I like, you know. And, and so we have to learn how to do certain things. There, there's a skill and an art to everything we do. Amen. A skill and an art. You know, if you still one of them that that's burning hot dogs, you know, just, just keep keep trying. But it is. I know how to do that. You put a little bit more water in the top. Amen. That, that's how you, you quit the hot dogs. You just add a little bit more water. And, and that's simple. And see, then you go from that, then you move over the bridge and, and stuff like that. It, it's, you know, it, it's art to it, but you have to accomplish some things. And, and that's where it go back where the older ladies have to teach the young ones how to cook certain things. Well, not just the ladies, the men too, because you got some men that know how to cook now, baby. So it, it, it's, um, it's a two edged story. And, you know, I want to just, you know, just say in Isaiah, if we were to accomplish a test, it talks about study. You know, that's one thing. You can't get around studying the Word of God. You got to spend time with God. You got to spend time in His Word. You know, like I was saying, you know, I was struggling uh, with the situation. And, you know, cause I, I shared with the men last Sunday that how I was struggling, you know, with the thing. And then when I, as soon as I walk in here and sit down with God, he, he just whispered in my spirit that I need to just talk about grace. And see, when I was talking about grace, that means I had to study grace. Amen. Amen. And see, that's how God operates. If you're dealing with something, if you go to God, God will give you scriptures, he'll give you revelation, and he'll give you knowledge on how to handle the situation you're going to. he he, he let you know how to handle, how to get peace in that situation. You know, just think about it. He said he'll give you peace in the midst of a storm. You know, peace in the midst of a storm. And, and the average person, they think, well, how can I have peace in the midst of a storm? And, and, and it's because you got God's grace. Mm -hmm. You know, you got God's grace. You know, the, the storms and stuff, everything, the trees can be falling all around your house, but it won't touch your house because you got that peace. You know, and, and so that's what we got to learn how to operate in. When we go through situations and, and things are happening that we don't understand that are blowing your mind, you go to God. You know, go to God. Sometimes, you know, you can't really go to a prayer partner sometimes because they, they don't understand what you're dealing with. You know, I understand. I remember um, when we first joined Ames and started going to Houston, Bishop he, you know, well, as apostle, he, he was talking in, in one of the boot camps, and he said, it's easy to be in faith about a situation when nobody you love names at the top of the, the um, cliff over mm -hmm. The doctor come in and say different things and ask different questions. Oh, I'm with you. I'm in faith because, you know, it's easy because they're really they're in faith because they're your friend. But when there's love involved, that's a different situation. Now, either your name at the top of the chart, and you got to know that you know. Mm -hmm. You got to really understand God's grace. You got to understand the favor of God. You have to know that God said that He'll never leave you and He'll never forsake you. Amen. It, it can seem like the ship is going down. But guess what? God said you'll not be consumed. Mm -hmm. You know, just think about when Jesus was going to the other side and the disciples saw the wind just tossing. If you can get a picture of that, of a ship. Oh, if any of y'all have never been deep sea fishing, I had a, a, a tremendous experience of that. You know, that my wife begged me not to go that morning, but I wanted to go. And, you know, I just thank God that she was still back there praying. Amen. Because when I got out there on that ship, I didn't know nothing about saying on peace, be still, or anything. You know, I ain't want to put nobody in fear, but if you ain't never been deep sea fishing, it's a different going deep sea fishing from, um, say, like a, a place that take a lot of tours out than one that's supposed to be taking professional fishing. You know, and I got there and I see these people with these big old coats. I said, hey. I was thinking that the boat wasn't going out. So, you know, we sat down and ate breakfast and everything. The one that was going on the boat, they ain't even eating nothing. And so, you know, we got out there. With one fellow, we got about 20 miles out. His head was over the boat the whole time. <laughs> I mean, the whole time. And then the, the boat seemed like it got up on, on one of these waves. 
And, and when it dropped, I don't know, it seemed like we went down and come back. And it was but, uh, you know, I thank God when I got back, I ain't been deep sea fishing since. I ain't on the shadow fishing. I ain't been on the creek no more. When I get ready to go fishing, I call my wife Friday, and I said, call the fish store. I know I was going to get exactly what I want, how I want it. So I ain't, I ain't going back out there. I've been down. If I go back, we go on you know, like we don't go like that in no water. You can see, it's, it's amazing when you get out there and you can't see that no water. You know, and then you see when the boat no you wake up and you see a flying fish. I mean a flying fish. You know, it ain't just on TV. It's actually flying fish in the ocean. And, uh, and you got eels come up and they're crying like a baby. You think somebody didn't catch a baby and it's an eel coming up on the ship. You know, so you, you got to have some peace when you go out and fish like that. You got to know that, you know. And, and see, that's what I thank God for. That's why I, I, I'm saying in Joshua, you, you got to study this word. You know, it, it, when you get out there in situations and circumstances, it, it seems like on the highway, just imagine, I can imagine a lot of us being close in accident, and we call on the name of Jesus, and it just seems like the vehicle just, Amen. just part from you. It's it just how, that how angels move things around for us. And so we have to be careful, and we have to know um, what we're doing. Okay, I'm going to close this out. In Isaiah 55 and 8, God said, For my thoughts are not your thoughts. Neither your ways, my way, said the Lord. So that means we have to get in the word of God. We have to study the word of God. God thoughts and ways are not those of the natural person, but human mind and heart can be renewed and transformed by seeking him. Then our thoughts and ways will begin to conform to his. Our greatest desire should be to live in conformity to the likeness of our Lord, that everything we do pleases the God we serve. You see the difference? We want to please God first. Mm -hmm. See, if you please, it said, even if your ways um, please the Lord, he'll make all your enemies be at peace to you. Mm -hmm. The people that are talking about you are going to come back and bless you. Mm -hmm. So let's make sure that we're serving God and doing what God is calling, uh, calling us to do. It said we can always come boldly to God's throne of grace. Always mm -hmm. come boldly. Even if you have missed it, you can still go to God's throne of grace. You can go there with your head. Hell, uh, and God is able to do what he has commanded you to do. Hallelujah. Hebrews 4, 14 through 16. Seeing then that we have a great high priest that is passed into the heaven, Jesus, the Son of God, let us hold fast our profession. For we have not a high priest which cannot be touched with the feeling of our infirmities, but was in all point tempted like we are, yet without sin. It said, let us therefore come boldly unto the throne of grace, that we may obtain mercy and find grace in the time of need. Mm -hmm. and, and see, that, that's, you know, for me, this is the day. You know, I, I thank God for the grace and for the peace in, in this time. Amen. Amen. Father, we thank you for your word today, Lord God. Father, we thank you for peace, Lord God. Thank you. Father, that if anyone out there, Lord God, that will deal with any type of situation, Lord God, Father, let them come bold unto your throne where they will find peace, they'll find grace, Lord God. They'll find answers for every situation that they're going through. So, Father, we just thank you also for your word today. And, Father, we give you all the honor and glory in Jesus' name. Just for our close, I want to give you an opportunity to make Jesus the Lord and Savior of your life. You know, because we cannot um, say this enough. There's still some people that haven't accepted Jesus Christ the Lord and Savior and some that have but they don't you know know where to turn and, and if this is be your first time we want to encourage you to, to get in touch with us and we'll give you some information to help you along the way if you're in this city if you I'll say if you're in a 50 mile radius of this facility you ought to come out and allow God to change your life amen, amen. and I want you to repeat after me amen <laughs> Hallelujah. It said, Almighty God, Almighty God I, confess with my mouth, I confess with my mouth the Lord Jesus. The Lord Jesus. I, believe I believe in my heart that God raised Jesus, God raised Jesus from, the dead. from the dead. Therefore, Therefore I, repent I repent of all my sins and make you Lord and, make you Lord and, Savior, and Savior of my life, of my life. in Jesus' in name. Jesus name. Amen. Amen.